Hi, everyone. My name is Frank Munz. I work as a principal TM engineer for Databricks, and I'd like to welcome you to this session about the serverless real-time lake house. Did you know that your phone is not only receiving alerts in the case of an earthquake, but if you allow for it, it can also send data back. Data coming from the acceleration sensor that is built into your phone. This is kind of crowdsourcing earthquake detection and analysis. And when I heard about this, I thought like, wow, could I build something like this with Databricks? And then I just built it and I tried it with a live audience at Data and AI Summit and the audience kind of liked it. So this is a short version of this presentation from Data and AI Summit. It's a session about the data and system architecture um, from that application. It's using Delta Life tables for data pipelines. It's using workflows for orchestration, notebooks for visualization, and it's also using data sharing to share the final results. So I had to process live data that is coming from thousands or let's say hundreds of mobile phones, but I wanted to have accurate measurements. So every phone was sending like five events per second. And that means even for this small demo that I was running in the conference room, we were dealing with a sustained rate of tens of millions of events per day. So the latencies that I wanted to have, they should have been in like the, 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 the single digit second um, area, like a few seconds. And the app should work serverless because I definitely wanted to foc on, focus on visualizations and doing the fun part and not on, you know, measuring and me measuring the performance of clusters and, and, and setting the size of clusters. So... Once the app was built, I obviously had to test it with a real earthquake or a simulated earthquake. And what better place there is in the world than San Francisco. So we simulated a huge earthquake in the conference room with a total of 140 people. And it was a lot of fun. So the live data comes in just a few seconds later. And this was one of several visualizations that I did with Databricks Notebooks. And looking at the data coming in, you can see the magnitude of the earthquake that we simulated. And it's averaged across all the sensors grouped into timed windows. Okay, so if we break this down to a more generic reference architecture, you will see that we can ingest from hundreds of different sources. There are basically two types of sources. Like one is cloud files. That means the data is in a folder. It's in an S3 bucket. And the other type is like, it is a, a messaging system, a messaging bus such as Kinesis or Kafka. Either case, we use a streaming table for the ingestion of data and best practice is to avoid complex transformations. So we don't want to have any problem during the ingestion because we want to get the data off the system with a short retention period and put it into a permanent data warehouse, which is our lake house. So the BROS table, comes with infinite history. It's uh, created by using a streaming table. And then we go from bronze to silver and from silver to gold, typically using materialized views, which also some support the most complex transformations. So the pattern is streaming tables and materialized views, streaming tables used in for ingestion, files or message brokers, they're low latency um, because they work incrementally. Data is processed exactly once. And then we have the materialized views, which are the result of a query. And they support even the most complex um, transformations. Sometimes people say, so what? Workflows or DLT? I see you have both. Uh, we, you have two systems. They both belong to data engineering. And that's true. But this, the distinction is actually very, very easy. So... Workflows is for control flow, for orchestration. You can orchestrate anything within the lake house. You can run any task within workflow. You can create schedules. Now, one of these tasks could be a data pipeline. So you can use workflows to schedule a data pipeline, schedule DLT. And DLT is control, sorry, DLT is data flow. So workflows, control flow, DLT, data flow. 
then people say, hey, isn't it super expensive if you do streaming? And the answer is no. Actually, streaming could be cheaper because you only process incrementally what was not processed before. There is this spectrum from running, streaming, triggering it manually. You can do this, like trigger a pipeline manually. You can schedule it using workflows, or you can run it continually so it keeps running all the time, which will give you the shortest latency. And I told you the whole um, demo is about serverless. We have serverless for workflows. And you all remember when serverless started uh, with these Lambda functions, uh, we talked about instant scalability. They scale to zero. You only pay for value. But with serverless workflows, we are going one step further. You can now also choose between you want to run a workflow as soon as possible or you want to run it as cost optimized as possible. So this is in preview. Um, that means it's it's coming up, and um, we also have serverless for streaming, serverless for DLT. Um, this is also where we can decrease the TCO and the latency because we can um, pipeline the execution of micro batches, and we can dynamically uh, tune um, the batch sizes, um, which uh, which allows us to create the speed up that you see on the right hand side. Okay, let's um, shift gears and let me walk you through the architecture of the demo. It all starts here with the mobile phones generating five events per second um, and taking the data from their sensors. They uh, use a key, a AWS key, that only allows them to do a put on Kinesis. Um, the application on the phone is a single page web application. That means it's serverless. It's hosted in an S3 bucket. It um, actually looks like this. And then if you shake the phone, like it, it measures the magnitude of the movement and it turns um, yellow. And if you shake it more, it, uh, it actually turns red. And the data is like transmitted like um, five times per second to Kinesis. So we have the Kinesis shot here, which, um, well, it looks like a normal Kinesis shot. Um, that's my shot. That's the name. It's active right here. It has it has one. Um, so it's a stream that has one shot. Data retention is one day. So this data is not stored forever. This is more a buffer, as I explained to you um, already. And um, going back to from Kinesis, the data is picked up with Delta Life tables. I'm going to show you this in a second. We're using Unity Catalog. It's all backed up by Delta tables. And from DLT, we do um, data analytics using Spark Structured Streaming. This is where we need to create those um, time windows. But there's also a couple of notebooks for visualization. And the question is always, is it data that is really streaming, that is live, that is visualized? And uh, very often, um, we can use live data and display it with a built-in display function. So you're going to see this. We're going to see a dashboard. And then at the very end, I want to share like the, those phones that were moving the most from AWS, um, which is where my Databricks instance is running to a completely different cloud, a completely different system, non-Databricks, just Google Collapse, and it's not even using Spark, but Pandas, right? That's the plan. So if we look at the data pipeline, it looks like this. Remember the pattern? We ingest with a streaming table, and then we do transformations uh, with a materialized view. So this is where I have an aggregation, where I do global aggregates um, for whatever happened in my pipeline. Look at this. This is a view that is not materialized. If it's not materialized, um, it's not showing up in the catalog. Um, and that's the live uh, pipeline running with streaming data on a continuous mode. If I click here on settings, you also see it's serverless. So I have this little serverless switch, and that's what we announced. It's still in preview, depending on uh, when are you seeing this. And if you if I turn this on, all this compute settings um, just is not necessary anymore, and you see it's gone. Okay, um, let me cancel this. Um, let's have a look at the code just quickly. And um, it's all Python code. So this is the code um, for the pipeline. And if we look at this, you see what I already told you. It's doing a Spark read stream. Format is Kinesis. It could be Pubsub. Um, it could be Kafka. 
we give it a stream name and the keys it needs to read from uh, this um, Kinesis stream. And then that's the core component here. We use this DLT table decorator to turn this little um, function into a streaming table. And then it goes on. We need to map the schema. Whenever you ingest from a messaging system like Kafka or Kinesis, you get a blob, you need to map it back to the real types. Then remember the second um, item that we had in the in the pipeline was not a table, it was a view. This is how I created it. And then it goes on and on. This is the sensor table. And then at the very end, we have this materialized view. And you can see it's a materialized view because it's using the table decorator, but it's not doing a read stream, but a DLT read. Okay. And that's the code for the whole pipeline. And um, this whole pipeline, if we do the math, we had like five events per second, and that's per minute, and that's per hour, and that's per day. And then I had 140 people participating. It's 60 million events per day of sustained throughput. And um, there was no server. It's all serverless um, for DLT. And then, well, the question is obviously, how does it look like if we um, do the data analytics? And for the data analytics, I have this um, this um, other notebook. Now, this other notebook is is reading from the sensor table. So the sensor table, which was kind of the gold table of my pipeline, comes with column, device, time, and magnitude. And we are obviously interested in the magnitude. And what I do here is I read the stream that's Spark Structured Streaming from this table. I need to create a watermark because I don't want to keep state forever. I don't want to wait for late arrivals forever. So I say maximum three seconds. I want to group it in windows, which are defined by the time. I want to have one second windows. For each of these windows, I average the magnitude. And then I sort the windows um, because I want to have them uh, in the right time. And I show the last 30 ones. And you see here, this is the data that was just um, created live. And this is where you see it um, moving through the system. And if I if I shake the phones uh, much more, I get um, higher magnitudes and it will, well, typically take a couple of seconds to, trick, uh, to trickle through um, DLT and to go through Spark Structure Streaming for the analytics. And you see here is a one that I just uh, did like three seconds ago uh, coming through. Okay, there is another cool way to, um, to visualize this. And that's actually something I was playing with. Um, I call it um, plot. And um, same thing, it's actually using Plotly Express. It's using... It's reading data from this delta table from the sensor one. And at the very end with Plotly Express, let me run this again, because I want to see this with the live data. At the very end, um, I plot the data. So you see the, hang on, that's always a bit difficult. You see two different devices, one here, one here. And what happened? And this is the time from left to right, increasing time, and you see the magnitude towards the top. So that's a, a fun little live interactive um, demo of the data that I was just uh, generating. Then I told you about the table. So the table is stored in Unity Catalog. So if I go to data and I drill down to my catalog, that's my catalog, that's my schema. These are the tables. Um, these three tables, except the MyShare one, are actually tables from the DLT pipeline. It starts with the raw stream, it goes to sensor, and then to global stat. Now, this is a bit difficult to, to figure out which one comes first. And this is why if you click on a table, you can also click on lineage. You see the dependencies upstream and downstream. But what is much cooler, you also get the lineage graph, and you see raw stream goes to sensor, goes to global stat. And then I have another table that I created, which, which is created based on the sensor data. Um, and if I open this one and open this one, and I look at 
what's the magnitude doing here? So the magnitude here is used to create all these statistics like maximum, minimum, average, and standard deviation of the magnitude. So that's um, super cool. And if I close this, there is the final thing I want to show you. I have a workflows. And it's not only that DLT is serverless, but also my workflows is serverless. So if I scroll down, you see the compute here, it defaults to serverless. This is what we announced at Data and AI Summit. And it's even using a serverless um, data warehouse. Um, matrix view from serverless. Um, every task is shown as one of these um, rectangles. That's the total um, execution time. The fun thing is now, if I click on a task, like the last one, which is uh, computing a heat map, um, I can also scroll down and I would see the heat map that was created when this task was running. And then we always talk about, you know, deep observability. And this is what people love, you know, now I can just click in and still work with the results here and, and zoom in, um, et cetera. Um, the other task that was executed was updating the dashboard. Um, which happened here. And if I go back and look at the task, this is the task view. So update the dashboard was this task. And the dashboard is here. Um, so I have a, a dashboard which is running on serverless data warehouse. And um, that's the connection details. And if I go to dashboards, my dashboards, I'm going to see it here. And that's the one. This is the one that is updated by um, Databricks workflows. And that's it. That's actually most of the demo. The only other thing I wanted to show you is that I can share my data um, very easily. Again, I need to, this is my um, this is my catalog. Then if I click on Delta sharing here and I select my share, this is the share that I already created. Um, you see, I share exactly this my share table that we've seen in the lineage. And I'm sharing it with a recipient. If I click on the recipient, you see the recipient here. Recipients actually work with a, to with a token. So if I rotate this now, I would get a new token. Um, to save some time, I'll just keep the existing one. And now this is the cool part where I switch to another cloud, another system that is not Databricks. And all I need to do is I, I install the libraries. And then if I look at this at this file, this is the file that contains the token. Um, you see the token here, it's the Bureau token with this lengthy um, key. And with this lengthy key, I can connect to the shared data and the shared data is actually hidden behind this endpoint. Now, the cool thing is what we do here is to transfer the data to get to the data. We use encrypted um, short-lived S3 URLs. So that means you get the whole bandwidth that you can get from S3, um, but it's all hidden. It's all beautifully hidden. All you do is you access a pandas data frame. So we create a client based on the on the share config file, and then I can say, you know, client list me all tables. That's the my share table, and then with this table I can say, well, load me the whole thing as pandas. Then I have it as pandas, and that was actually the like the high score of what we did in the live session. Um, so somebody was really shaking the phone with a magnitude of 230, which is amazing because, I mean, I get to 50 or 60. And um, that's it, mostly. There is one more thing I want to show you. Um, these were all the people, histogram over their magnitude. That's again a snapshot from this uh, from the from the from the dashboard. We created a heat map. That's uh, you've seen that. Um, these were the results um, from the run at Data and AI Summit. You see that was the second run that we were doing. It's actually quite interesting. You've seen that already. The whole demo is recorded in the Databricks Demo Center. You get the notebooks. They are on GitHub. Um, if you go to github.com slash Databricks um, DLT notebooks, you'll find it. And with this, I want to say thank you.